Hey hello everyone, so in this video we are going to discuss about very small but interesting concept called as continue and break statement. Let's start with the continue statement. Continue statement is used to skip the execution of rest of the loop body and take the control to next iteration. Okay, so it's very hard to understand the continue statement with this small explanation. So what I'll do is I'll show you one small code and with the help of that code we'll understand what is the continue statement and how it works. So let's jump on to write a code. I'll write one for loop. Let's create one variable over here with value i as zero and i less than 10. This is my test condition. And in every iteration, I'll increment i by one, okay? And then let's write body of the for loop. So in the body, what I'll just do is I'll write c out i colon value of i. So I write i followed by e and dl. Okay, now let's execute this code. This is very simple code. So let's execute this code. For that, let me clear the terminal. Let's compile this code and let's execute this. You can see i uh, value of i is getting printed from 0 to 9. Okay, so it, this loop is executing 10 times. It is printing value of i from 0 to 9. Okay. Now let's say I give you one use case. Let's say I want to print value of i only when it is even. I don't want to print value of i when it is odd. Okay, how we can do it. So for that, we can actually make use of the continuous statement. I'll show you how. See what I'll do is I'll write one if statement over here. I'll check if my i is odd number. So how we can check whether my number is odd or even we can make use of the mod operator. So I'll write if i mod 2, if it is equal to equal to 1, that means my i is odd. So whenever my i is odd, I'll write continue statement. Okay, now what will happen? See, as I explain you the definition of continue, what it does, it whenever the continue statement executes, it skips the execution of remaining body. Okay, so basically, whenever this continue will execute, the remaining body will not be executed. Its execution will be skipped. And that's why I will not be printed on the screen whenever it is odd because the continue statement will execute and then the remaining body will be skipped and the control will go to next iteration. Now what happens when I say that the control will go to next iteration? So what happens is, see the remaining body execution is skipped and then directly the update statement executes. Let's understand this with uh, the example. So I'll clear this terminal, let's compile and execute this code. You can see it is printing i only when it is even, it is not printing value of i when it is odd. Okay, so let's see how this code is working. Um, Initially, your i is 0, 0 mod 2 equal to equal to 1. This condition is false. So this continue statement will not be executed. Okay. And i 0 will be printed on the screen. Then i will be incremented. I will become 1. 1 less than 10. This condition is true. So we'll come inside the loop body. Now in loop body, what we are doing is we are checking whether my 1 mod 2 equal to equal to 1. Now 1 is the odd number. So 1 mod 2 is 1 basically. So this continue statement executes. Now as this continue statement is executing, what is going to happen? The loop body will be skipped. Okay. The remaining part of the loop body will be skipped. And basically the control will go to the update statement and the update will happen. Now the i will become 2. Okay, now 2 less than 10 is again 2. So we'll again come inside the loop body. Now 2 mod 2 equal to equal to 1. This condition is false because 2 is an even number. So the control will not go inside this if statement and then i colon 2 will be printed on the screen. Again, i will be incremented, i will become 3. Then 3 less than 10, again this condition is true so we'll come inside the loop body and then 3 mod 2 equal to equal to 1 this condition is true so continue will execute and then the control will go to update statement remaining body's execution will be skipped so in this way the continue statement executes it's very important very simple to remember so basically whenever you want to skip the execution of remaining body and you want to take the control to next situation in such scenarios you can make use of the continue statement i hope you are clear with how the continue statement executes in C++ and what is the use of the continue statement. Let's continue to the next statement. Let's understand the next statement, which is break statement. So what I'll do is I'll just remove this code. Okay. Now let's understand what is break statement. See break statement is going to terminate the loop. 
okay it is responsible for terminating the loop so it can be the scenario you can have such kind of use case where based on some condition you need to terminate the loop you want to exit from the loop so in such scenarios you can make use of the break statement so break statement is used to break the loop okay terminate the loop and continue statement is used to continue to the next iteration this is the difference between these two statements i'll show you how the break statement works so for that what i'll do is i'll write c out uh let's say i over here followed by e and dl and then over here we'll write break statement let's see what happens okay so for that let's clear the terminal let's write compile uh, command and then let's execute it you can see it is just printing i colon zero and then the loop is not continuing okay loop is terminating over there okay and this is happening because of this break statement okay so what is happening exactly see the loop is starting i is getting initialized with zero then zero less than 10 this condition is true so we are coming inside the loop then i colon zero will be printed on the screen and then the break statement is getting executed and the break statement terminates the loop okay it ends the loop over there so whenever the break statement executes loop gets terminated okay this is very important very simple to remember so in this case the break statement is executing immediately after c out i colon zero and that's the reason it is breaking the loop it is terminating the loop at this point okay now let's say i modify the code i write one if statement over here i write if i equal to equal to 5 if i becomes 5 then and then only break the loop so let's see what happens in this case i'll compile and execute this code you can see in this case it is printing value of i till my i becomes 5 okay once my i becomes 5 uh, the loop gets terminated because this condition executes or evaluates to true and then uh, if statements body will be executed and inside if statement body we have written break statement so this loop will be breaked okay always remember these break and continue statements are for the loop okay they are not for the if else statement okay they are always written to break or continue the loop but most of the times or in order to write a sensible code or some logical code you need to write break or continue statement inside some conditional statement inside if statement okay if you don't write these statements inside conditional statement inside if statement then your code is not going to be meaningful for example this code see uh, you are writing a loop then inside the loop you are immediately writing break statement without any condition so there's no use of writing the loop because this loop is always going to execute only once so why to write loop in that case just write normal c out statement without any loop because anyways it is going to execute only once okay that's why it doesn't make any sense similarly if you just write continue statement like this without any condition then let's see what happens see i'll compile and execute this code you can see nothing is getting printed on the screen i'll tell you why see i will be initialized to zero zero less than 10 this condition is true so we are coming inside the loop then this continue statement executes so what continue statement says don't execute rest of the body just take the control to the update statement so control will go to update statement and the rest of the body's execution will be skipped so i will be incremented i will become one now one less than 10 again this condition is true so again we are going to come inside the loop body but again we are writing continue statement again the continue statement is getting executed so again the body will be skipped again increment will happen and this will keep on happening and finally the loop will terminate because your i will become 10 10 less than 10 this condition will become false and then loop will terminate and nothing is getting printed inside the loop because of this continuous statement okay so basically continue and break statements needs to be written inside some conditional statement otherwise they don't make good amount of sense okay they don't make any sense i'll say okay so i hope you are clear with this continue and break statement in c++ now i need to show you one more thing to you so there is one small concept which we are, we are going to discuss uh, for that what i'll do is i'll change the condition i'll make i less than 5 okay now there is one uh, small concept called as nested loops okay now what is nested loop you can write loops inside loops and you can do it for n number of times so let's imagine that you have one for loop inside that for loop you have another for loop inside that for loop you have another for loop and you keep on doing this this is called as nested for loops or nested loops okay so we will do we'll just do that 
what I'll do is over here I'll write another for loop inside this for loop I'll create another variable called a j which will start from 0 and it will go till 3 okay and then j plus plus okay this is another for loop okay so this is a nested for loop this is scenario of nested for loop now inside this for loop what I'll do is I'll write c out let's say let's print i as well as j so i write c out i and j now let's understand how this code is going to execute see first this out of for loop is going to be executed obviously so over here we are initializing i with 0 0 less than 5 this condition is true so we are going to come inside this for loop now once we come inside this for loop or once this for loop body get executed this body okay this part see inside the body we have another for loop okay so what is going to happen in this loop this loop is going to be executed so over here what we are doing we are initializing j with 0 so j gets initialized with 0 j less than 3 so 0 is less than 3 this condition is true so we are going to come inside this body okay this part this part will start executing now now in this case your i is 0 your j is 0 so 0 0 will be printed on the screen now this inner for loop needs to be completed we are still inside the inner for loop okay see outer for loop is getting executed but in order to complete its own body the inner for loop needs to be completed okay and that's the reason j will be incremented j will become 1 1 less than 3 this condition is true so again i 0 and j 1 will be printed now again j will increment j will become 2 2 less than 3 is again true so it will print i0 and j2 on the screen then j will increment j will become 3 and now finally j becomes 3 3 less than 3 this condition becomes false and that's the reason inner for loop will be terminated okay uh, or it will not terminate i'll say it will be finished okay because the condition is false so let's execute this code and see the output so i'll clear the terminal let's compile this code let's execute it you can see the output it is printing i0 then j0 then i0 j1 i0 j2 okay now after this part gets completed this loop gets completed see this for loop body ends so now i will increment i will become one and that's the reason you can see over here i is one j is zero then i is one j is one then i is one j is two okay then again i will increment i will become two so this will keep on happening because see this outer for loop body is going to execute five times and every time in every time this inner for loop body will execute three times and that's the reason you can see uh, we are getting 15 lines on the screen five outer loop runs and three inner loop runs so if you multiply five with three it becomes 15 okay so that's the reason you are going to see 15 lines on the screen okay so yeah this is the nested loop concept okay now let's see what happens if you write break statement or continue statement in the nested loop so let's write break statement over here or let's write it over here below c out statement let's see what happens so let's go to compiler let's go to terminal let's clear the terminal let's compile the code and let's execute it okay focus on the output focus very carefully see it is printing i0 j0 it is printing i1 j0 it is printing i2 j0 it is printing i3 j0 and it is printing i4 j0 so what is the conclusion over here see the break statement is going to break only one loop see you can observe over here whenever this break statement gets executed it is just breaking one loop you can see the outer loop is still running five times it is not getting terminated okay so always remember the break statement ends the closest loop whichever closest loop it finds that loop will be terminated okay so in this case this break statement is close to this for loop so whenever this break statement executes this for loop will be terminated and the similar is for continue statement let's see see in this case nothing will be printed on the screen but same thing will happen whichever is the closest loop for the continue statement that loop will be continued okay so body of that loop will be skipped okay so in this case this loop is closest to this continue statement so body of this loop will be skipped okay so what i can do is i can write some c out statement over here maybe c out i 
and let's print value of i followed by e and dl so if this continue statement is not continuing this for loop as well the out of for loop this c out should get printed okay so let's see i'll compile the code let's execute it you can see it is printing this c out statement okay so only the inner for loop is getting continued the outer for loop is not getting continued so what is the conclusion of this discussion we always remember the break and continue statement will always have effect on the nearest loop okay they will not have effect on all the loops all the nested loops they will have effect only on the closest loop that is the conclusion of this discussion. So I hope now you have got the good idea about what is continue statement, what is break statement, what is nested loops and how the continue and break statement works inside the nested loops. So that's it for this video. See you in the next one.